Hey, my friends. I'm so glad that you found me here today. If you found me, my name is Misty Sims, and this is my little corner of the internet that I like to call Beyond Reasonable Doubt, where we talk about all things true crime, culty, and a little bit creepy. I'm so happy that you clicked this video, and I do hope that you will hang around and hit that subscribe button so that we can hang out long term and talk about more true crime all the time. And if you're not new here and you're returning, just know that I love you more than cupcakes with sprinkles and I'm so happy to have you back. Uh, if I sound a little raspy and this video was late getting it out, it is because I have been sick. So we are going to get through this one though today. Um, I am so sorry that I'm late getting it out, but I figured you would rather have like this sort of put together version of me than uh, what you were going to get over the last few days. So, <laughs> but I'm really glad to, to be here with y'all. Um, last week you got a twofer because it was fall break here. Um, but everything is back to normal this week, back to the, to the regular routine of work and school. So I uh, hope you guys had a great, great weekend. Uh, did something fun. Maybe got outside. The weather's beautiful here. Uh, that perfect just like fall, go to the pumpkin patch, that kind of thing um, has kind of started down here in Southern Tennessee. So excited about that because you know I love all things fall and Halloween and creepy and I meant to have on earrings today that uh, a friend has made me. I'll try to get them on in the next video or at least maybe in the thumbnail so that I can uh, share it with you but uh, they're absolutely awesome and they're a little ghost. They're so cute so um, and I maybe I'll do a post on my Instagram as well so you guys can see it. If you're not following me on Instagram the link is in the description box but it's Missy Sims BRD so please go over there and follow me. Um, I can maybe do more quick stories and a lot of other fun things over there more so than I can here so I'd like to build up my following over there. Also on TikTok, um, not the best with the TikTok, but we're getting there. We're learning. <laughs> we're learning. New th old dogs are learning new tricks every day. So um, today is a story that it just infuriates me. It frustrates me. I cannot believe we are, we're going to be talking about something that's a decade old and we're still in the same point we were you know, back in 2011 and 12, when this took place, it just, it's just too much. It's, it's too much. You're going to be mad by the time you listen to this. I'm quite certain. Um, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for the victim. It's heartbreaking for the mama. Um, before we get into this, um, couple things, little housekeeping things here, because I know some people won't listen all the way to the end. So, in the description today, you are going to find two different links. Um, one is a GoFundMe that is directly related to this case. It is not mine. I am not affiliated with it in any way other than just trying to raise some awareness where the mom in this case is trying to get justice for her son and for her family. So, if you are so inclined, there is a link to that and you can donate. She's trying to hire a private investigator to be on retainer to keep this case alive as well as just some other needs. She's wanting, I believe, um, bury her son's ashes, things like that, that, you know, um, a mama just shouldn't have to worry about, you know? So if we can help her out, if if you have the, the means to help her out and are inclined, please click that link and, and go forth and, and give her, a, you know, a little bit of your money. I think the minimum donation on GoFundMe is $5, but that goes a long way. And you can tell her, you know, comment in there that you came to her from this channel. Um, I'm hoping maybe I can reach out to her and interview her in the future. Because I don't want this case to die, and I don't think you will either when you when you hear it if you haven't heard about it already. A uh, second link that is down there in the description box is I have spoken very openly about the fact that I do hope that this channel gets monetized one day, and that's not because I want to just profit off of this. It's because I want to do something like Kendall Ray does and give it back to a cause that's very important to bringing justice, bringing people home, all that type of thing. So since we're not monetized, I can't pull from the proceeds of the channel just yet. But what I can do, and what I found out that I could do, is create a team page over on Nick Mix website. So that's what I did. You guys are welcome to go over there. If you have the funds to donate to Nick Mix, you know they are doing amazing things. Um, if you don't know what Nick Mix is, it's a national center for missing and exploited children. They're doing great things every day, um, bringing kids home, working hard to find them, and putting these people away that, you know, are doing harmful things to to children and just, you know, 
I, I wish we didn't have a need for, for them to be there, but they are, and I'm so thankful that they are. So I set a goal on the page. Uh, I think the default goal is 2500 So I would love to raise that if we can, um, but that page will be out there for you to go and contribute to, and it'll be linked in the description box. Now, all that said, right now is a very trying time in our economy. Uh, prices are expensive for everything we do. Every time I go to the grocery store, it's a new, new shock at a new day. Cars are expensive. Houses are expensive. Clothes are expensive. Everything's expensive. So you may not be in a place where you can comfortably donate even the $5. And that is that is completely understandable. I think most of us are in that situation right now where we're unsure of what we want to do with our finances because we don't know what the next rise in cost is going to be, right? But it is absolutely free to share this video and get this story out there. Absolutely 100% free to subscribe, like it, comment it. If you're on Spotify, share the podcast, link it on your Facebook page, link it on your Instagram, something. Tell people that it's out there so that we can keep the name of our victim today, Blake Chappelle, out there and in the public because this kid, <sighs> y'all, we just, we're, we're going to get into the story, but you guys are going to feel the same way that I do, I think, by the end of this and just want to be like just kicking down doors and punching walls because it's like, you got to do something. This was not okay. And I don't know why people aren't paying more attention to it. So please share, please like, please subscribe, turn on your notification bell, do all the things. If you're on Spotify, go over there and rate that podcast, do all the podcast things. Whew, that was a lot for an intro, but now we're ready and we're going to get right into this. So let's join me. And when we talk the story, that I'm going to try to stay calm through of Blake Chappelle. So I have gained a friend since <laughs> since the intro. So, all right, you guys are used to seeing my baby on the on the video. So she needs a little snuggling today, and quite frankly, I'm okay with that with the way that this case is. So, so who is Blake Chappelle? Blake Chappelle was a 17 year old boy who was loving life as a teenager. He had a new girlfriend that he was taking to the homecoming dance. Um, Kind of a cute story. We've all been teenagers before, right? So it was a cute story. He actually took her to the homecoming dance, and then he decided to go over to a friend's house. And I guess they were chit-chatting on the phone, you know, texting, doing what they're doing. And he's like, I'm going to go see her again. It's like 2 in the morning, but I'm going to walk over there. I want to see her again. So, you know, he snuck out. He goes over to see her, and he's, he's so excited just about this new relationship. Well, on the walk back to the friend's house, that would be the last time that Blake would ever be seen. So that was the night of October 15th of 2011. He just vanished into thin air. No traces of him, no signs of him. Nobody's got any kind of recollection of anything that happened after he left his girlfriend's house and on his way back to his friend's house. Um, now, granted, it was in the middle of the night, but still, what happened to Blake? Two months later, Blake would be found face down in a creek wearing only his underwear. And he would have suffered from a gunshot wound to the back of the head. And he was, of course, deceased. So, you know, over a decade later, Blake's family is still fighting to bring the person who did this to justice. And that's just, that's just too long. It's too long to have to do this. It's too long to have to fight for your loved one. So, I don't know. Let's get through the story and then we can, we can complain about how furious we are. All right, so, so Blake was born on February 7th, 1994 to his mom, Melissa. He didn't really have much of a relationship with his dad. It was kind of like his mom, Melissa, and he against the world. But there wasn't just, you know, a thing in the world that he loved more than his mama. Like, he, Blake, Blake loved his mom. They were good friends on top of being mother-son. And by all accounts, Blake was described as just a great kid. You know, he was... He was doing things like, you know, sports, and he was skateboarding. He loved Guitar Hero. You know, he was doing a lot of things that your typical kid would do. But then, you know, Blake went above and beyond what a normal kid would do. And, and let me explain that a little bit. So, Melissa was doing great things with Blake, and she's raising him on her own, and she's, she's killing it as a mom, right? She's a retail manager. She's doing her thing. Unfortunately, sometimes our health doesn't always cooperate with our goals in life, and 
what we want to achieve. And Melissa would suffer a stroke. And this stroke would lead her, of course, to not being able to work a normal job like she wanted to and them having to go on disability. With all that meant that they could no longer afford the way that they were living and that, you know, pushed them to having to move and they had to move into a lower cost of living type of arrangement. Um, the way that I understood this was that, you know, it might not necessarily be, I guess, the part of, you know, the town that you would necessarily want to live in, right? But it was affordable to them and it was cost effective. So they move. Blake, sweet Blake, I, I tell you what, this just shows that Mama Melissa, she had a little gem right here. Instead of just being, you know, down on himself and down on Melissa and down on the, the hand, that the cards that him and dealt, Blake was empathetic for these people that he was now living around that, you know, were having a hard time. They were having a hard time making ends meet. They were, you know, living in maybe a less desirable part of town because it was affordable. And, and he was empathetic to this. He realized how quickly that your life can change. You know, in, in a blink of an eye, everything that, that we are blessed with today could easily be taken away. And he saw that. And he was, he tried to comfort others. He, you know, he wanted to, to be kind to them when they were struggling. And he, he just cared about it. And I, I just think that says a lot about Blake, about the way that, you know, Melissa was raising him up and instilling values in him and things like that of, of loving people. And I mean, we need more of that. We need way, way more of that. So it was just a, a real breath of fresh air to read that, that there was this kid out there that, that felt that way. And he wasn't just out, you know, kicking rocks and being pissed off that his life had changed when he didn't want it to. And he was worried about his mama, right? He's worried about her and, and the, the stress, right? Because if you're, if you're a parent, it, you have stress to provide for your kids. Like that is the one thing you want to do. You want to provide for them and you want to provide for them. At least my opinion is I want to do even better for them than my parents did for me. And I had a great upbringing. Um, my parents are great to me. My, my, my mom is gone now, but my dad is still here, still just as great to me. I could call him today with anything that I need. But I want to make sure that, you know, I keep that up and even raise the bar for my kids because it's just, that's just what we want to do, right? We always want to just strive to, to give them the best of everything that we can and the best of ourselves. And Blake saw, you know, she's stressing a little bit over this stuff or whatever. So he decides that he's going to bring in more money to the house. He's a kid. Like, I love this though. So Blake decides I can make some money and I know how. Like it's a little entrepreneurial spirit over here. He would go and buy um, like the bulk packs of energy drinks. I believe it was Monsters. And then he would take them to school and sell them for an upcharge. Because, you know, if you buy from the bulk store, it's always going to be cheaper than like if you buy at the gas station. And that was how he would bring money into the house. And I'm like, I mean, this kid doesn't have a way necessarily probably. To, I, I, I don't know his age at that point, but I doubt he had, you know, the means to have a full time job or anything like that. And here he is, that sweet little heart that he's got, worried about his mama. And he is bringing money into this household. Like, I mean, I don't know, Blake. I, I wish you were here because I, 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 I love that. I love that he loved his mama just that much. And, and he was willing to take care of her. But, um, you know, so, so like I said, Blake, Blake's a good kid. Right. You know, I mean, just, he just get out, man. He, he's a good kid all the way around. And then he's doing typical things that, that kids love, you know, that boys love, especially like the, the fishing. That was his thing. You know, like I said, he liked sports. He did really well in school and he hinged on wanting to be a broadcaster when he grew up. That was some classes I think that he had taken and he just really, really liked it. And that was going to be what he wanted to do with his life. And I thought that was pretty cool because, I kind of wanted to be a sports broadcaster when I grew up. Um, I I don't really know what changed and why I didn't do it. Maybe that's why I'm doing YouTube now. I don't know. But I always wanted to do something like that. So, you know, here's Blake living the dream, man. So how do we go from all this preciousness and just all this like sweet little entrepreneurial stuff to face down in a creek? How do we get there? So... Let's start with Blake's life. Um, he's living in Georgia. And, you know, he's around like May 28th of 2011. Um, Blake was brutally attacked by a man named Earl Jones. Now, you know, 
what why would a why why did, what's wrong with Earl? You know, what's what's Earl got going on? You know, because he's a grown he's a grown man. Grown mm-mm, man. Why is he attacking a kid, right? So Blake used to date uh Earl's stepdaughter, Skylar. Now, by all accounts, you know, they had a little relationship, it's a little teenage thing going on, but they had broken up, I believe, about a week before this attack. So they're done, you know, they maybe that maybe they're in and out, who knows? You know, you're, you're 17 years old. Who ain't in and out on relationships at that point? But they're broken up. And, you know, Skylar's not, I mean, sorry. Blake is not really having necessarily anything. I don't want to say not having anything to do with Skylar, but, you know, they're broken up. So he's, you know, doing his own thing. He's over at a friend's house. He's doing all that kind of stuff. So Skylar calls Blake's house that day on May 28th, he calls, calls, she calls the house and she's, she gets mom, Melissa, and she's very upset on the phone. Melissa can tell that she is upset, um, probably crying and things like that, asked to speak to Blake. And, you know, Melissa is like, I'm sorry, I've got like something in my eye. This all, like, this is the kind of stuff that happens when I try to film. I can't be normal. So anyway, Melissa gets the phone call so she's not going to tell Skylar where Blake's at because she doesn't know, like, what's going on. Is this some kind of drama? Is she just trying to find Blake and see him? You know, and, and she don't want to get in the middle of that. And, and if you know any, if, you, if you've if you been a teenager before, if you are a teenager now and you're watching this, you know teenage relationships are, they're a mess, <laughs> in the, a beautiful mess. In the, in the most beautiful way, they're a mess. And you don't want to get in the middle of it, right? So she tells Skylar that she doesn't know where Blake is at and hangs up. The end. Well, fast forward about 30 minutes later and Skylar's mom calls um, Blake's house. So Melissa answers and she's like, Skylar left a note and saying basically that she hates me and she has run away. Do you know where she might be? And, you know, Melissa now, Melissa now is, is gone into mom mode, much like I would if, if one of my fr- um, kid's friend's moms called me and said their kid was missing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Let me help you, right? So Melissa's like, let me help you. I don't know where she is. I haven't seen her, but here's where Blake is. This is the house he's at. Go see if he knows where she's at. So she gives her the location, okay? So mom goes over there. And she finds Blake and she asks where her daughter is. And Blake's like, I have no idea. I, you know, we are broken up. I haven't seen her. Um, so now what, right? So mom calls Melissa back and the aperture's kind of changed a little bit, right? Like now she's, she's kind of alluding to the fact that Blake might be hiding Skylar. And, you know, Melissa's like, I, you know, probably not. They're broken up, but okay. Well, Blake, you know, being who Blake is, he gets worried, right? And this friend's house is located right across the street from a trailer park that apparently a lot of um, the kids' friends, like Blake's friends and Melissa's, not Melissa, Skylar's friends, they hang out at, um, live there, hang out at. And then there's a body of water towards the back. Like, I think they were calling it a lake, but I'm guessing it's maybe more like a pond. I don't know. Um, And he's, you know, Blake's kind of thinking to himself, she's probably over there. Because I guess that's like the hangout spot, right? Like, we all have those in towns. Especially the smaller the town, the bigger the hangout spot, right? Like, you know where it is. So, he jumps on his bike. Starts kind of going through the trailer park. And he's, you know, kind of looking around. And he sees her. She's back there at that water just like he thought. So, you know, he's like, hey, your, your family is frantic right now wanting to know where you are. Like, we need to just, you know, come with me. Let's call them. Let's do something, okay? Because, you know... This ain't right. This ain't right to do them like that. You don't have to go home necessarily, but let them know you're okay. Well, at the same time, he's noticed, and this will come up a little bit later, so keep this in your in your back pocket. He notices that she's wearing his clothes. And not ones that he ever left at her house or gave to her or anything like that. So he thinks it's a little weird, but he didn't really have time to react to that. Because within just a few seconds... Here comes this car, like, speeding up, you know, and Earl comes rolling out of this car, madder than a wet hen, and his friend comes out and jumps out from the other side, and they kind of, like, come at Blake, like, you know, from both sides and Skylar, and they're fussing and cussing and and carrying on, you know, get off the bike, what's she doing with you, and Blake is trying to 
to explain. Like, I, I found her. I'm trying to get her to call you guys. Like, I don't know why she's here. Whatever. You know, I mean, <laughs> maybe she's running from you because you're acting like a crazy person. Don't know. But anyway, they're just carrying on. And out of nowhere, Earl just hauls off and sucker punches Blake in the face. This is a 17-year-old kid. Now, you know that is not okay. That ain't okay. You're not supposed to be hitting no kid. Now, and granted, some of them, they, they talk smack and they do all that. But you gotta, you gotta put that fist in your pocket. You ain't supposed to be doing that. Don't be hitting nobody. But especially if you're a grown person, don't be hitting a kid. Well, he gets Blake to the ground because Blake wasn't expecting that. I mean, who was? And just kicks crap out of him right? Just kicking the crap out of him. And then when he's done with that, he snatches Skylar by the hair and drags her back to the car and shoves her in the trunk. Because that's what normal people do. Okay? That's what normal folks do, Earl. That's why the Dixie Chicks wrote a song about Earl. Like, why are you putting your stepdaughter in a trunk, Earl? Anyway, you know, they speed off and then, now, you know, they're gone. At this point now, there, you know, Blake's friend who is with him, his name is Marcus. Marcus has stayed here this whole entire time because Marcus was worried a little bit about Blake already before this altercation happened because Earl had come by Marcus's place earlier and said, hey, you've seen Blake. And you know, he's like, no, I haven't. Why? And Earl, through the car, pulls up his shirt and exposes a weapon in the waistband of his pants and said, tell him I'm looking for him. What is happening? Grown man acting like a dang fool out here. Gonna pull a gun on a kid. Like, what is wrong with you? Probably gonna get, like, banned from YouTube for saying that word. The pew pew. Pulling it out, showing some other kid he gonna look for your friend. Well, Marcus at least, Marcus is brave and an upstanding person here because he sticks around because he's worried, right? He needs to watch what's happening because he's afraid there's even more is gonna go on. But he helps Blake, you know, kind of kind of get to his feet and get himself together and they they get to another friend's house they call 911 911 comes and they're like you know you you are slap beat up you need to to go to the hospital like you need to go to the hospital Blake being the person that he is is like I'm worried that we can't afford that and I don't want to put a financial strain on my mama so I'm not going to the hospital however However, I do want to press charges on Earl for what he just did to me. So, good good for Blake and bless his heart being, being the sweet little, you know, person that he is that, you know, he wouldn't, wouldn't put any financial burden on his poor mama. So, so anyway, the police, you know, they take his statement and they tell Melissa and Blake, because by this point, you know, she's gotten there that they will get back in contact with them as soon as they've talked to all the parties involved. You know, there's a lot that's got to go on now at this point. So, they they get Blake home. Melissa gets Blake home, patches him up, you know, and, and trying to, you know, I guess kind of recount what happened. And Blake says to her that he's a little scared because he felt like this was a setup. And he recounts those clothes. He was like, she's wearing my clothes, Mama. Like, I feel like I was set up, like, it, to make it, like, look like we were together or something. I don't know. But she's wearing my clothes. And they, you know, they all knew where we were and all this type of stuff. And Melissa starts, like, kind of, kind of, you know, scratching her head a little bit. And she's like, wait a minute. So, uh, like, right after the breakup, so just a few days ago, after the breakup, Skylar comes rap a tap tapping on the door with, a, like, a, th a, you know, a pile of stuff. And she's like... I have a bunch of stuff of Blake's. We broke up and I need to return it. And he's got some stuff of mine. Can I go get it? And Melissa was like, sure, you know, whatever. It's fine. You know, I, I, at this point, I don't think she had any issues with Skylar. I think that, you know, the relationship may be over, but it's not like, you know, she had any sour feelings towards her. So she let her go, go take, go get her stuff. Um, all right. If you're going to get down, you can get down. There we go. Okay. So she lets her go and, you know, Skylar's out there for a minute because she's getting her stuff. And Melissa said, you know, she came back down with some things, but she didn't think about going through it. Of course, what, why would you? And she wonders, did Skylar take some things while she was there? Because Blake's account was she wasn't just wearing like, you know, we've all done that when we were, especially when we were younger. Like you get the hoodie or the sweatshirt or the jacket or something, you know, so everybody knows, you know, that's my man because I got his jacket on. She's wearing his shirt, his pants, and his shoes. And I'm like, 
I ain't. I mean, me and my son share shoes because his, like, I mean, he's got Jordan, so, and we wear the same size, so. <laughs> but she done stole his britches, too. Like, okay, or whatever. Which maybe, you know, like, thinking about that, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she was hoping, like, I'm going to take these clothes over there, and then, like, you know, in a week or so, I'm going to call him once he's, like, calm down or whatever, and I'm going to be like, I found some more stuff of yours. You might want to come get it, and maybe we can talk. Like, First of all, let your big sister talk to you right now. Don't use that as leverage because if you got to trap some dude in coming to talk to you, he ain't worth it no way. Don't be doing that. Don't do that. There is somebody else out there. Let him go. Let Jolene have him or whatever's going on, okay? So there, there's that. There's that piece of advice. But anyway, you know, obviously this is weird, right? That, that all that happened she's wearing his clothes now he's been jumped there's these phone calls that were all going on so it you know it was a little strange well in the mix of this happening over on, at their house back over at marcus's house and or the you know the trailer park the area earl done come back he, he done come back and he has got these kids outside and he's like hey basically i just want to let y'all know y'all didn't see anything today and if you say you saw something you're gonna get it Okay, well, if this fool's innocent, why he got to be telling these kids that? Anyway, this word gets back to Melissa and Blake, like, of course it will. So, the next morning, an investigator calls to talk to Melissa and Blake, kind of go back through what all had happened, you know, and, and get an update. Well, Melissa tells the investigator what happened, that Earl came back over there and threatened these kids, basically. And that detective is like, ah, oh, well, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I mean, it just brushed off it's no it's no big deal so you know okay well I thought that was a big deal but all right you know let's not worry about it so about two weeks later she hasn't really heard anything nothing no status no nothing and she gets a call from another police officer and this police officer this investigator apologizes for it taking so long for them to call her because he's been on vacation for a couple weeks and she's like, well, but you already have all my information, though, because your partner called. And he's like, ma'am, I don't know what you're talking about. He's very confused because he says he's the only one working the case. Well, either the right hand ain't talking to the left hand up in this precinct, which by the end of this, you're probably going to think that anyway. Or something fishy just went on and Melissa's radar goes off. Like she's got like mom dar, like 2.0. Like she's ready to go. She calls phone company. Because she's like, who called me then? I want to know. Girl, it was Earl. It was Earl impersonating a police officer. She got the phone ring. She got the receipts. She knows who it was. Like, how in the mess do you have the, the, the backbone, Earl, to do all this and then call her and fake being an investigator just so you can get some info out of her? Like, you, dude, you dirty. You dirty. Like, come on. But, you know, Earl, it ain't looking good for you, my man. It's just not. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. By the end of this, maybe Earl's smarter than we all are. So, Blake gets a call. He's got to go into the station. So, they want him to run through his account of the event again. And he does. And, you know, he doesn't change his story whatsoever. Finally, they decide that they need to talk to Earl. Like, you think? You think you need to talk to Earl? And Earl's real hard to get a hold of. Like, you know, I can't imagine he's the most popular guy in town anywhere. But they try to get a hold of him. They end up having to go, like, through the landlord, the landlord's son, like, all this mess before they can even get Earl in. But they finally do. And so they're like, well, sir, you know, I need you to run us through, you know, what happened um, and tell us your story. And, I, I mean, I just want to say this. Like, my first thing that would have come out of my mouth would be, like, why are you so hard to get a hold of if you ain't guilty of nothing? But... That's why, that's why I'm just a lady on the internet with a camera, a mic, and too much to say, right? Because if I were a police officer, we'd all be in trouble. But anyway, so <laughs> you know, Earl, Earl gives his account. He got the note from Skylar. However, what he said was that the note said Skylar had run away with Blake. They were going to go to Tennessee. And Earl was very, very upset because he believed that Blake had been stealing money from him. I guess for this Romeo and Juliet runaway scheme. So he starts looking around, can't find Blake, 
and he he call or, or can't find Skylar in the house, so he he calls a friend to borrow a car. And the police officer stops him. He's like, okay, so you borrowed a car. He's like, yeah, because I don't have one right now. And the police officer was like, did the friend go with you? Because you remember in the other account, it was that the friend jumped out, Earl jumped out, and they surround him. And he's like, no, I went by myself. All right, so discrepancy number two, I guess. We all agree Skylar left a note saying she was running away. Okay, we, we all agree to that. All right, so Earl goes over to the trailer park area to start looking for Skylar and Blake, which I'm confused by that. I'm confused by that. So you think that they ran away to Tennessee and you go to this trailer park to look for them. So I don't know if the Greyhound goes through there or if this trailer park is, you know, can teleport to Tennessee or what's going on, but they're in Georgia. So, okay. Nobody thought to ask that. Like, I mean, why, why did he go there to begin with to look for them? I mean, if I'm running away with my boyfriend at, at 17, I ain't hitting the brakes nowhere. I'm getting out of town right away. So, make it make sense. So, anyway, Earl does say that he encounters Marcus or a friend. I don't know if he called his name, but he encounters a friend and asks, have you seen Blake and Skylar? So, you know, the officer's like, oh, okay. Well, during this little chitty chat, did you happen to, to show him that you were packing? And he's like... Oh, no, 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 I don't, I can't have a gun. I'm a felon. I'm a convicted felon. I can't have a gun. As a matter of fact, I even got a sign that says that the little pew pew equals five years. So, I mean, I guess all we need to do to stop all the crime in the world is just put signs out because that clearly has kept Earl on the straight and narrow. So, Lesson learned, guys. Lesson learned. So, if you are, if you're on Spotify, my, I, I think I just rolled my eyes so hard when I was reading that originally, and just probably now even repeating it, that I actually hurt my face. <laughs> I'm like, what is that me even? Man, God, like, why can't you even come up with a good defense about it? But anyway, you know, officers let this roll off. They're like, okay, so I guess you didn't flash a weapon. And then Earl explains that he goes on to the body of water that they were at and he sees Blake and he asks Blake, has he seen Skylar? You know, Blake says no. He said, all right, we'll let her know we're looking for her and turns around. And about that time, he gets a call from his wife. So Skylar's mom calls him and says that she's gotten a call from Skylar and Skylar is now in another part of the, of the country, another part of the United States. She's out of Georgia. She's gone. And Earl's like, oh, well, I guess I'm looking in the wrong place. Like kind of, you know, whatever. And then he turns around and he sees Skylar. She has, you know, emerged from the brush or wherever she was and he sees her. Well, at that point, you know, he does get a little aggravated, a little agitated. And he says he does grab her and snatch her by the arm, not by the hair, but he does probably kind of aggressively put her in the, into the car, not into the trunk, into the car because, you know, the situation has gotten a little emotionally charged, Right. And he does also say that he is, is even more upset because he does see her wearing male clothing that I guess he assumes does belong to Blake. So, he is very upset, puts her in the car, kind of throws her in the back seat, end of story. That was what happened. So, the police go back and they ask Marcus again, are you sure that you saw what you said you saw because it doesn't add up with what Earl's telling us now? And Marcus is like, yeah. And I wouldn't lie for nobody because I ain't going down like that. And I'll give you the names of everybody else that was there that witnessed it too. And they're going to tell you the same story. So what do police do? You know, they, they go talk to these other people that he gave them names of, right? Yeah, you'd think. You'd think that that was what they did. But that's not what they did. Instead, they interview Skylar. And I mean, I know they've got to interview Skylar because she is pivotal in this case. But why did you not talk to the other people that Marcus told you to talk to? I mean, he was there. They were there. Why would you not talk to them as well? You know, I mean, it should not be the potential assaulters ver version of the story against the assaultee. And then now the girl that's stuck in the middle. So, I don't know. Anyway, they talked to Skylar. Skylar does say that she ran away. She does say that she was with Blake prior to her even calling his mom. So that was kind of, I guess, of a, like a setup or something. And, or, you know, just throwing him off the trail or something like that. But that she does call. Um, and then Earl shows up, just like we all said. 
he shows up looking for her and that she has been stubborn and run away and I guess acted up. So he was a little forceful with her putting her in the car, but it was not in the trunk and it was in the car. It was not by the hair. And when they ask her, did you ever see um, him hit Blake? And she says, no, Blake's a liar and a drug user. It's always the drug users. And like, I mean, that's always what they're going to say. And I'm like, and I, I, as far as we know, nothing has come out of Blake using illegal drugs or anything like that outside of there is going to be a reference a little bit later to one of he and his friends wanting to go buy a little bit of green uh, to smoke one night. But there's nothing that says that, like, you know, he's a habitual drug user or anything like that. Unfortunately, sometimes when you get labeled as such, the police, you know, that kind of tunnel visions, right? And I think that's what they were hoping for in this situation. And, you know, it doesn't matter. You, you don't deserve to be punched to the ground and then kicked repeatedly. Nor do I think that he would necessarily lie about this incident if I mean it's not related to the drug to drug use, even if he was right, so I, I none of that really made sense on on anything to me. But you know, whatever. It kind of sounds like at this point, from the way the officer documents things and the way that he starts talking to other people, you know, that he he's kind of like just you know he's got no reason to not believe Skyler, and he's kind of already labeled Blake as as a problem, and he doesn't like him or something. And I mean, you know, like, well, okay, sir, like, what about these other witnesses? What about them? Don't worry about who you like and who you dislike. Why don't you go talk to them? Because, like, if it's 2, 3, 4, 30, why are they going to lie? Why, I mean, why would they all lie and back up one person? Because it sounded like they were all friends. So, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, clearly, clearly, you know, the only honest people that we have here are you know like is Skylar and Earl and I'm sure Skylar wouldn't have a reason to lie right like I mean she's not gonna lie about the guy that was putting her in the trunk of a car jerking her around by the hair and carrying on like she ain't scared of him or nothing like lie for him right I mean I, I don't know I mean she gotta go home with that dude so seems logical that she might not be on the up and up about that and you know, you guys aren't probably doing anything to ask her if she's afraid at this point. But anyway, they, they decide instead of talking to these witnesses, I shouldn't laugh, but it's just, it's so dang funny that they do this next thing to me without talking to the witnesses first or at all. They, they go on Facebook. And, and granted, you can find out a whole lot about somebody on their social media if they're transparent on there, right? And teenagers will tend to be more transparent, right? They don't hide things like, you know, they're not the Instagram model family that takes 37 hours to get one picture to put it up on there to make your life feel inadequate, right? They're just on there being real and going out and going back and forth in comments and, you know, kind of the stuff that we pop popcorn and, and read and live for. Well, that's exactly what he found. He finds this um, post that I guess one of Skylar's ex-girlfriends had commented on. No, not, not, um, I said Skylar. Blake's ex-girlfriends had commented on. So Sky, it was a picture of Skylar and Blake and this ex-girlfriend had commented on it. And I guess they got to going back and forth in this, in this little comment thread and saying, you know, like Skylar's no longer with Blake and this girl was right about him all along and da, 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 da. And then she's like, well, it ain't no big thing because my daddy just beat the out of him. And I was like, oh, did he now? So they, you know, you, you were, I mean, you were saying that he didn't do nothing. Now you're on the internet all bragging about how he beat the mess out of him. So they call her back in and they ask her about it. They're like, you know this girl? You know, she's like, yeah, you know, kind of. And they're like, what's this about him beating up Blake? You know, she's like, oh, I was just, you know, embellishing, just wanting to look big and bad, da, 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 da. And like, bada bing, bada boom, she's credible again because, you know, that sounds like, you know, no one that would do that would lie about anything to the cops or anything like that. So, <sighs> so if you're not already toasty mad, let's go on to June the 30th. And this is when Blake is called in for additional questioning. Now, why he still needs to be called in a month later for additional questions about this, I don't know. But he is called in 
And when he gets there, they're like, well, just come on. It's only going to take a second. Come on to the back. And Melissa's like, well, I don't, you know, she drove him. She's with him. She's like, well, I'd like to come back too. And the officer's kind of like, like, why? Like, he's, how old is he? And, you know, she's very clear that he's 17 years old and he's underage. And the officer's just like, nah, he's good. It won't be but a second. Like, no, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. He is under 18. So he should have his mother present. So maybe the laws in Georgia are different. I don't know. But, no, sir. No, sir. But, you know, this is Blake's case. This is Blake filing charges on this individual. I would have assumed that the police were on our side, right? I mean, I'm a kid. I got where I got my kid in there, and he's had the mess beat out of him. By an adult, I would assume they were on our side. Apparently, I would assume wrong because they get Blake back in there and they get to going back and forth about these questions about everything. And, you know, well, you know, we, we believe Skylar and, and, you know, everything that she said and it doesn't match up to your story, even though you've told the same story 10 different times and it's always the same. And he's like, well, I mean, I can understand why she would lie. She was terrified of her stepdad, like terrified of him. And they're like, nah, you know, nah, no, I'm not Earl, right? And they're like, you know, you, did, you saw her that day. And he's like, well, maybe I saw her beforehand, you know. And when he made that one little, that was all it took. They put Blake under arrest, y'all, for interference with custody. Which basically, in, in very layman's terms, go, you know, always do your own research, go go research all this for yourself, but basically it's when you take or like entice a child to come with you versus like, you know, or, or they're no longer in the guardianship of their parents or their custodians. So you're enticing them to run away or, you know, whatever. I mean, what is happening right now? What in the Georgia is happening right now? Like, you you know you haven't talked to these other witnesses. You guys know that. You know that, officer, sir. And apparently we're just saying, like, you know, nobody can tell the truth but, but Earl and Skyler, evidently. You know, because Earl's got this sign and, and crap, so he's trustworthy. You know, there's the eye roll again. They arrest Blake. And, and, and I mean, Melissa is like, what is happening? Like, what is going on? Um, she tells him, you know, like, I, I pulled phone records. I know Earl was impersonating a police officer, da 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 And they're just like, nope, nope, case is closed. And now he's got charges pending, he being Blake, and, he's, and he sits in jail for 16 days. 16 days this kid is in jail over this mess. Well, in the meantime, well, after, you know, after he's released, in the meantime, you know, he's got to go to court, got trials and all that type of mess to go through because, you know, now he's the, the bad one. They're harassing them, you know, they're, they're harassing Melissa and them. They're, they're, you know, being ugly to the family. It gets to the point where they're being like stalked and things like that so much that she packs Blake up in the middle of the night and they move to noon in Georgia. They get out of there. They're like, we got to go. We ain't doing this anymore. Well, it ain't long before they find them. Because, you know, you, you can only go so far, right? You can only go so far. And there's allegations that their pets were killed. Um, they were spotlighting the windows. They were stalking and harassing them. And, you know, at this point, and a lot of this is recounted from Melissa talking to Sherilyn Dale, and I hope I get to talk to Melissa. I'm, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to reach out to her because I'd love to interview her about this because this case just makes me want to just spit. I'm so mad and I want to keep Blake's name out there. But um, it sounds like she was afraid then to that point to go to the police. Um, and who wouldn't be because you don't know who to trust, right? Like, who do you trust? through all this, you thought you could trust the police and your poor son ends up not only with his case being closed, but getting arrested and his own charges pending. Like it's, it's ridiculous. So she doesn't say anything. They just kind of lay low. Um, you know, Blake, Blake being the good kid that he is, he, he sinks into his new life here in this new town and makes new friends and all types of stuff. And then ends up actually meeting a girl that he really likes. And her name is Ryan. And he's just, he's real sweet on Ryan, real sweet on Ryan. And asked her to the homecoming dance, which is going to be happening on October the 15th. And he is just stoked about this dance. Like, they're out tie shopping. He's wanting to match up on her dress. Like, they're calling back and forth. They're doing all this cute stuff. Like, he is so excited. 
he goes, you know, goes over to your house. They take the, you know, the little, um, you know, obligatory parent pictures, right, for everybody in their cute outfits and things. And then the parents, um, Ryan's parents take them out to dinner and then drop them off at the dance. And he just has the best time. He ends up sending Melissa a message just telling her that, you know, it's just the best night of his life. He is so happy. He's just, just loving it, right? Well, after the dance, Ryan's parents pick him back up. They go back to Ryan's for a little bit. And I think they watched a movie. And it's time for him to leave. Well, by this point, he has wanted to go spend the night with his friend, new friend, Austin. And he asked Melissa. And Melissa, of course, has got some anxiety through the roof, right? Just like any of us would because, you know, there's been a lot. But she's also recognizing, too, that she wants Blake to have some normal ness to his life in this new place new town new life all this stuff so she says okay but only if you stay at austin's don't leave well blake 17 and i i don't know that he would have necessarily couched it as being in love but is that puppy love with ryan and he wants to see her and he wants to see her one more time that night so they, they're they're chit-chatting, um, texting, and he decides he's going to go on over there about 2 in the morning is when they make this decision, right? Because teenagers can stay up late like that. I'd be like, I have been asleep for hours, boy. Who are you talking to? In fact, I'll text you back in the morning when I wake up. I ain't even get that. But, you know, Austin's like, well, here's a key, you know, so you can get back in and, you know, be careful, basically. Sends him on his way. And, you know, uh, he's texting Ryan through the whole walk. You know, it's cold out there, that type of thing. And gets there, I think, uh, about four in the morning. He gets to her house. And he ain't there long because I guess they're making a little racket with him trying to sneak on in and stuff to where Grandma wakes up. And Grandma busts in the room and catches him. Hey, yeah, that's always a good situation, right? That's always what you want is about four in the morning for your grandmother to come in your room and somebody in there that ain't supposed to be. So... She's like, I'm going to wake your parents up. You know, we ain't, ain't none of this, none of this nonsense going to be going on, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But um, she, you know, she takes off to wake up Ryan's parents and Ryan's like, all right, you, you got to go. Like this situation is going to go from bad to worse. Just get out. Go, go get back to Austin's house. So he, he treks on home or on back to, to Austin's home. The whole time he's texting her and her mother and apologizing. For breaking the rules and all these types of things i mean that's a pretty decent kid i mean you know i don't know i i, I like to think that i was a good kid and I, i'd have been afraid to probably text somebody's mom like that that's a good kid right well about five between five and five thirty um he sends her one final text that says man it's cold out here or it's cold outside something to that effect and that was it that's the last anybody hears from blake well, she assumes, Ryan assumes that he made it home, right? He made it to Austin's. He's gone to bed, went to sleep, and they actually have plans the next day at 11 o'clock. So she'll see him then. Austin wakes up and he thinks that Blake maybe fell asleep at Ryan's house. So, you know, nobody's overly alarmed right then. Well, 11 o'clock rolls around and he doesn't show up for these plans. And that's not right. That's not, you know, this guy was just sneaking in this house the last night. He's not going to miss this date with this girl at this point, right? He's not. He, you know, and apologizes to her parents and things like that. Like, this is a serious relationship in his mind and hers as well. So he's not going to miss this. Well, by this point, too, Ryan's mom is thinking the same thing. She's like, this ain't right. Something's wrong. This is not how this would, would go. And I think it says a lot, too, that she cares she obviously cares about him as well and they think a lot of this kid because they're out now starting to look for him and he was just breaking rules in their house the night before so she clearly thinks of him as part of the family right because she's already kind of forgiven that she's out looking for him wanting to know where he's at I guess they get in touch with Austin Austin figures out that he's not with you know that, that Blake's not with Ryan Ryan knows he's not with Austin what's going on Austin calls Melissa and he's like I need you to know Blake's missing you know her heart probably exploded because now it's like everything that she thought could happen it just did she calls the police you know they start they file a missing persons report everybody's looking for him he's nowhere to be found okay nowhere 
The only thing that they have to go on is at some point in this text exchange between he and Ryan, when he left Ryan's house to walk back to Austin's, was he said that a police officer stopped him, I guess wanting to know why he was out breaking curfew. And there's no report of this anywhere. No, And no officers come forward and said that they saw him, they talked to him, nothing like that, which I don't know. That sounds fishy to me. Um, and we know we've had somebody in this story impersonating a police officer already, so who knows who could have done it this time. But they, they look everywhere. They can't find him. Well, Melissa tries to tell the police about all the harassment and things that had been going on before their move and then after. And they, the police are just kind of laser focused on Ryan's family at this point. They don't want to hear about it. They're wanting to talk to them. They've turned their house upside down, ripped everything up, looking for all these clues and stuff that just quite frankly aren't there. Um, Ryan's family is nothing but cooperative. They pass lie detectors. They let them do whatever they want. And, and, you know, Melissa made sure when she spoke with Sherilyn that she was very clear that there was no thought that any Ryan's parents had anything to do with this or Ryan's family, Ryan, none of them. So, you know, it was unfortunate that they had to go through all that, but they were very cooperative and wanted to be sure that they cleared their name like innocent people would do. Earl from earlier saying allegedly um then they focus on austin for a little bit because that's the other last person to see him and you know kind of put him through ringer and there's no indication that austin had anything to do with this either and he was cooperative as well so you know here we are we don't know what's happened to blake we got no idea and then two months later in december melissa gets that phone call that no mother is ever going to be prepared for and the police let her know that they have positively identified Blake. He was face down in the creek wearing an undershirt and boxers and he had a gunshot wound to the head and he was deceased. Now, mind you, they never recovered his wallet, his phone, or his clothes. So keep that in mind. And then they also said that they believe that Ryan, uh, no, Blake, I, they, there's too many names in here, that Blake had only been in that creek a week so where was he for two months you know and I, I didn't get the full understanding if in the reports that that meant he had only his body had only been placed in there a week or if that meant that when they did the autopsy that it showed that he'd only been deceased for a week potentially um, and Melissa can't get a copy of the autopsy report either she has been denied that so and she did not get to see Blake's body either. So there's some questions there and it feels very uncomfortable to me. It feels very uncomfortable to me that things are being kept from her of all people. I don't understand why they would be kept from her. Um, but who knows, right? Who knows? So to this day, we are over a decade later and they are nowhere to finding justice for Blake. There has been no arrest. There has been nothing. The only thing that we know that she shared on, on Sherilyn's uh, podcast, YouTube channel, was that Skylar did reach out to her uh, twice throughout this. Now, mind you, she's made tribute videos to him and things like that. And I do agree with, with an assessment that I believe Sherilyn made. She does, Skylar does seem to be somebody that probably has suffered some abuse in her life. Her, the way that she came across in these tribute videos. If you want to see him, I'll, I can, I will link Sherilyn's channel over there. Um, she does, I'm not affiliated with her in any way. She doesn't know who I am, um, but I absolutely adore her. So, hi, Sherilyn, if you ever watch this. Um, you did great coverage on this, and I'm glad you did because that's how I found out about it. But she does seem like she's a survivor or a victim of abuse. So, I, I do think that she probably was truly remorseful over, over this, and she sends Melissa some text messages at some point where she basically says that she knows what happened to him and her stepfather slipped up and said that he saw him run across the road that night while he was out doing a repo job. He was a repo man. And he shot him and put him in the creek. Now, there's still holes in that to me. Um, and maybe she would have told her more because she asked her to meet her in person so that she could tell her um, some things and Melissa said no and I don't blame her. <laughs> I would not meet anybody from this family alone and I'm not accusing Skylar of anything but I'm like I just am going to stay away 
staying away. Um, but it was very disturbing, you know, that you know, she said that part, but where was he then for the two months that there was the gap of when he went missing into there? That still wasn't covered even in that supposed confession. Um, Melissa even said, too, that she had been behind him in a gas station when he was, you know, saying that he had basically beat this kid up just, you know, right around the time of the assault and thought his hand was broken and no one even thought to check or interview anybody at the gas station or anything like that. So, you know, there has been so much left uninvestigated, I feel like, in this case or unturned. I don't know why. I, I don't want I don't want to speculate and I don't I don't want to dog out the police department, but I do feel like that there is a lot of tunnel vision in this situation. I mean, it, I understand wanting to close a case and trying to find, you know, some resolution. I don't think the right moves were made in the assault case, and I definitely don't think they're being made right here. Um, somebody saw something, you know, and, and here's here's what I, f I fear the most. As a, as a family member of a victim of a case that sounds a lot like this, quite frankly, um, the perpetrator that committed the act against my family member had done this before and got a slap on the wrist and then did it again. And they got a slap on the wrist this time. And I guarantee you, I'm going to see his name again. I just believe that. I fully believe that. So that is what's going on now. We are seeing somebody potentially out there that has done this. They've gotten away with it. They're going to do it again. I mean, I just, I don't believe that you just, you know, you're just like, got what I came for and you're just done with it. And, and you know, I, I'm not accusing anybody, but I, I know who I would be looking at. And I believe that that's probably who Melissa feels like did it. It's obviously who Skylar feels like did it if she said those things. So, I don't know, y'all. I mean, I just don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you made it this whole way through, I, I do want to find some peace and some solace and some help for Blake and his family. I do hope that you guys will go check out the GoFundMe, share this video, share the TikTok, share the shorts, um, copy and paste it on your own social media, do your own video about it. It doesn't matter. Do do something. Go go get Sherilyn's and share it. Just keep this kid's name out there because his mom deserves justice. She's got, I think, a $20,000 reward out for the case. She's trying to get a PI on retainer to help, you know, investigate this. She's just wanting to bury his ashes, too. Like, no mama should have to go through that, you know? No mama should. And she is, and she's she's not well herself. She has a lot of health issues, probably a lot related to the stress of, of this entire situation. So if we can help her out, let's definitely do so. Um, if you aren't inclined to do that because you're uncomfortable, you know, with, with finances right now or even just some people don't like to contribute to GoFundMe. They just don't like that. Um, like I said, Freeway is just sharing everything. You can also go contribute to Nick Mick. Um, yeah, that's Blake Chappelle, y'all. It's I, I've lost sleep over this one. It really bothers me that, that this happened to this young man who seemed to just be such a loving, caring kid and didn't deserve to go out like this um and his poor mama sure doesn't deserve to live without answers so keep his name out there hashtag him whatever you got to do let's you know write letters to the gbi write letters to the to the georgia you know legislation to the to the governor or somebody somebody knows something and they need to open this thing back up like if a police officer stopped that kid that night then there should be a record of it or they should be in trouble for not coming forward and telling something that might be critical and if it was somebody that we discussed in this case that did it then they definitely deserve to be doing their time if it's someone we haven't heard about yet then police definitely need to get some leads so that they can get this dangerous individual off the streets so i mean that's oh and i did want to cover one thing i did say um you know that they were continuously being made to believe that skylar was doing drugs 
there was even a, a um, reference to it on one of the tribute videos that Skylar did. Um, there is absolutely no uh, reason that I believe people have been saying this. It was known that he and his friend, I, I'm assuming Austin, that night were going to go out and buy a little green. I ain't never heard of nobody doing something, carrying on some kind of weight like this over a bag of, of green. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't think that's what this was about. So, you know, who knows? It doesn't mean maybe he didn't see something he shouldn't have seen or whatever. Who knows? But I'm just saying, if that's what happened, that person still deserves to be put in jail for what they did because... I mean, if you, if you would take out somebody like this that was innocent to something, you know, you'd do it again. So. All right, that's all I got for you guys. That was a long one, but it deserved the time. He deserves the time. Melissa deserves the time. Melissa, if you watch this, please, please reach out. I want to speak with you and give you some time on here if you want it. I'm a small channel right now, so I don't know, you know, if that has the reach that we wish it did, but hopefully we'll keep growing. So we'll get there and we'll get his name out there. We won't give up. Um, you guys, world's crazy right now. If you watch the news, you know that things are just wild out there. And so I, when I say this with all my heart, I mean it, that I love you guys so much. I love you for watching. I love you for being here. I love you for being part of the cause to try to bring justice to these people and, and keep some love alive in the world. And I want to thank you for being here. And when I say stay safe out there, I truly mean it. I truly, truly mean it. And I absolutely adore you. I can't wait to see you next time. But until then, stay sweet and stay safe out there, my cupcakes. I love you. Bye.